thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. So, it, just in case there's anyone living under a rocker, how would you like to introduce yourself or describe it yourself, what you do? I am Ireland's biggest OnlyFans model. <laughs> yes! <laughs> 200 euro a month to subscribe. I'm really sexy. Um, oh my God, what am I? Jesus, I don't know. I present a few things, mm. a few bits and bobs. My name is James Kavna. I have Ireland's most followed cat. Her name is Princess Diana Kavna. Uh, I'm probably more known for owning her. Yeah. Um, and I have a cookbook called the Curibini Cookbook. Yeah. So I have fingers and many pies, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I have to say, I, I got a text from your lovely producer last week mm. and um, I was weirdly coincidentally in the car with my family and two Johnnies come up and my mum was telling my, my boyfriend about this story of my sister when she, my sister's in her 40s now, but back in the day, they were having coddle around the dinner table. Have yeah. you ever had coddle? It's yeah. a Dublin thing. Yeah. Vile. And <laughs> they, they, my my sister was, you know, she was like seven or eight and they were sitting around in the thing in the middle and the sausage skin kind of came off. It's the most horrendous thing in the world. <laughs> so this sausage skin is like floating and my sister picks it and goes, it looks like a Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad went berserk. But it was literally, you t- your producer texted me as soon as my mum told that story. So, so yeah. it's, it's Hello to you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're passing us today because you were down in Love Tropical Cork. Yes, the real Cor- capital. Curabini. Curabini. Uh, yeah. You what? love Cork. So your connection is your man William is from down there. Yes. And your food company is called Curabini. Yeah. Yeah. And is it public knowledge that you're thinking of moving down there or? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, it is. I always talk about how much I love it. Um, and yeah, we're at the moment, we're looking for a house down there. So if anyone has any leads, let me know. <laughs> um, some Sherry Fitzgerald just good fucking yeah, typing like mad now. I'll, I'll do some Instagram posts if you give me a house. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't, believe, can't believe you're leaving Dublin. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm like, uh, I, as you know, you go out with a Cork person as well. Um, mm. They are very proud of their mm. county and they're very influential on your thinking, I think. So I, I grew up a proud dub and now I'm a proud honorary Cork person I absolutely love it and I really especially during you know what's happened and and and, and local businesses and stuff mm. suffering I really admire what Cork has done I don't know if you've been recently but like all of all the streets off Patrick Street the, the, count, the council have done an amazing job of putting mm. all these tables and chairs out and there's yeah. a real it's like walking around well I was going to say Italy it's not quite <laughs> but like you know it's like walking around some sort of lovely little yeah. foreign village it's but there's a lovely uh, air and I just feel like I'm ready for court. Yeah, it's exactly like Italy, but everyone exactly. finishes their sentences in boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I find a cast that so Curabini is your food company. Yes. But like your social media stuff could be, you know, you wearing leather tassels <laughs> on your nipples <laughs> and then your food is like real rustic and healthy and wholesome. Yeah. This is really, how do you reconcile the two extreme parts of your personality? Kind of? I want it all. I'm yeah. a spectrum. <laughs> like, and do you know, I was only talking to someone about food and they were kind of talking about how I love McDonald's. I mm. absolutely love McDonald's, mm. but I also love a Michelin star restaurant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I don't like this. You have to be in a box. Do you know, yeah. and people yeah. have said that to me along. I'm not offended or anything, but people are like, oh, you know, you, you know, you're in leather chaps and you're <laughs> dancing to Berghain for 60, you know. Uh, but like, I, I can enjoy my rustic yes. country lifestyle by the sea. I love it all. Yeah. Do you know, I want, I want all the experience. Why can't we all have a bit of everything? Yeah. No, people are quick nowadays to say, who are you? What do you do? They want to put you in a box yeah. Yeah. and try and understand like, you. The first time we met our manager, he was like, listen, it's the music or the comedy. Yeah. yeah obviously, we're, like, like, we're not good at either. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> podcast. How does a podcast sound? <laughs> yeah. But I think I think as a society and as we're growing, we're kind of realizing we don't have to be in a box. We yeah. don't have to be in a nine to five job. Or maybe you want to do that. That's completely fine as well. Mm. But you can kind of I think people are realizing you can kind of create the life you want. Yeah. By exploring loads of different, you know, types of earning a living or whatever. Whatever you're into. There's it no sounds rules. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And do you have an approach for your social media content or like any kind of strategy or is it just no, what, yeah, whatever. I, you're feeling. Like I don't have a strategy for life, and I feel I feel really <laughs> kind of shy. You know, I do these I talks know. in college and stuff, and they're like, you know, tell us what your five year plan was. Yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm. <laughs> I was locked five minutes ago, so, <laughs> but like, I don't have like this strategy type thing. I just kind of, I'm. I feel very lucky. Like from I I I got like. 
enough points to do basket weaving on the Aran Islands <laughs> for my leaving search. No joke. It was the only course I could do. Um, but did you like, do it? Uh, I wish I did it. Yeah. Like, I would have, like, cool no, I didn't. And I'm raging. Imagine, like, being like Peg yeah. Sayers on a wall. Yeah. Like, it sounds C- very Curb- idyllic. Curabini baskets. Very <laughs> Curabini baskets. Yeah. But, like, I, I, got, I got really shit points. And then I just fell into a PR job. Then I fell into kind of, you know, doing stuff online. So I feel like I've just kind of been a salmon, not even going upstream. That's too much effort. I've just been f- going backwards down the stream. All over. But luckily, I've landed into nice things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm lucky in that sense. Work and in PR must have been handy enough for like you know like same as us you do some branded content or stuff like that like yeah you, just, you know both you. sides of it yeah yeah exactly it was a good thing to do and I think it, for a, a, anyone who is unsure of what to do I always recommend doing marketing or PR yeah. because you learn how to sell a story or tell a story or sell a product and that's applicable to every way of life yeah. so if there's anyone out there that's unsure of what to do do maybe a quick PR course or communications even because mm. isn't life storytelling yeah. yeah, if you but if you can get on with people, you'd surely earn a living in some way. That's oh it. my god, that's what my yeah. mother used to tell me. I never believed her. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about giving talks there in schools. Yeah, yeah. So you come in, life coach, life coach James, <laughs> life coach, coach Kavna, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> the other one <laughs> You were Telling us though About your own School experience Yes So yeah. you're Half a culture Half culture Went to yeah. school in Westmeath Yeah Boarding school Boarding school yeah What We actually did a topic On boarding mm. school oh, Like did you enjoy Boarding school I had the time Of my life In boarding really? school Oh my god I went In Westmeath In Westmeath <laughs> In the middle of nowhere Hay bales and all <laughs> Like the full whack um, But I, I I I didn't have the best Like start to my life I guess School life Primary school Was the best time of my life The You know The, the academic work Was easy like it was, you know, it was the one plus one Tara and Ben. It was like, it was my level of academia. I loved it. So I had the best time ever and it was a mixed school. I had my girls, had the boys. I was like getting all the parts in the drama. It, it, so it was just great. But then I remember, I, then I went to an all boys school and suddenly everything changed. It was like, I, you know, I, I was a real happy little gayling skipped into the school and it was like, oh, hang on. Are, is he a gay? <laughs> That's a no, no. <laughs> Um, so I, I kind of, you know, I, I there was a, a bit of a homophobic start to my school yeah. life. I was quite badly bullied. There was this one guy who used to bully me a lot. And on reflection, I always say he'd be amazing at marketing or something because the the, the kind of the efforts he went to bully me, it was so creative. What? Like, there, you know, he'd put things, letters through my um, locker. He'd write about me on the walls. Um, and I remember one day, actually, and this kind of changed everything, my perspective. He he filled out this survey and like it sounds gas but at the time I was really uncomfortable with who I was mm. I wasn't ready to come out um, I didn't even know if I was gay myself I fancied Buffy like I, I but Buffy then also I fancied Dunica O'Callaghan so it yeah. was you know it, I was confused you know yeah. so I remember um uh, he 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 made this survey. It was how gay is James, and he made it. You know those big pens with the four colors. Yeah. yeah. So he made it and ticked different colors to make it look like more people were filling it out to make it seem like more people were against me. Do you know what I mean? So he had this thing. But I remember he went to pass it back in the class, and this guy who I'm friends with now stopped the note going by, and he was like here cop on leave him alone and that was the first time I experienced someone standing up for me Mm, so I always kind of say there'll always be bullies there'll always be mean people in life but try and be the one to stand up for someone else because it changed my life not to be dramatic but then I realised hang on there's nice people in the world here there's lovely people so I always try and say stand up for someone else but um that's amazing then I went yeah it was really and I I love that guy for doing that for me because it really changed everything and then I went down to boarding school and I decided on the way down (coughs) That I was going to like be myself. I wasn't going to hide anymore. Yeah. And I remember I walked into the dorm and this guy goes, Are, this is my country accent, are you gay? And um, <laughs> That's not, not that bad. Good? Yeah. Um, and then I like kind of froze and I was like, yeah. And like, he was like, all right. And started unpacking his bag. And I was like, is this, this is all I have to do? Yeah. <laughs> do you know? And they, I don't was know. That like they was, had, that, was that you coming out right That was there? me coming out. And like, the, the, it was like they had nothing on me then or something. Yeah. And, I, and then I started to, it was like taking off baggage. I was like, and I truly believe you can't live your best life until you live your truest life. Mm-hmm. Until you are yourself 100%. I don't think you can achieve happiness or whatever. Yeah. So as from that day on, I started to just own myself, who I was, be a, a gay and just be everything else 
I am, but not hide parts of myself. And it was the best time ever. Boarding school was the crack, the debauchery, <laughs> the drinking, <laughs> the riding. No like, way. Oh my God. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I wish I went to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good Saturday night, oh, to be so honest. it was so fun. And you know what? Like, this is a different topic and each their own, but I, it was a mixed school. I don't really believe in segregating school mm. I think mixed schools are the way forward it's life men yeah. and women mix in life why are we segregating yeah. people in schools and I, I think I think the uh, everyone was quite was way more mature in the mixed school about talking to the opposite sex and about talking to each oh, other God, yeah. so you know but, I, I just felt there was a, a level of maturity in boarding school that I didn't have in the other school and it was just way better I'm totally sending my kids to boarding school Hold on, 100% though, like, but, like later in life, if you go and work in an office, there's 50 people in the office and, you know, it, it's, there's, there's boys and girls, it's surely going to stand to you, some young lad, like, you know, who's, who's been talking to girls all his life, like, and he's yeah. not a fucking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worked, out, worked out all right for us, John, didn't it? <laughs> well, you may know we had a listener write into us a couple of weeks ago. They were coming out to their GA team. Yes. So I we're going to kind of have to ask you for your guidance here. Um, not you're not like you know the king of the gays or anything. I am. <laughs> you, oh, you are. Sorry. I am. Yeah. I'm HRH H, king of the gays. <laughs> right, That's right. how you address me from sorry, now on. Yes. <laughs> Your Majesty. Um, I feel like we should bow. Yes. <laughs> Genflex. <laughs> Kiss the ring or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, you told us your own experience um, and, and school. I guess the, the boarding school would have a reputation for being a bit more macho or like, you know, all boys schools like that. Yeah. I was watching that movie, um, Handsome Devil. Oh, yes. About yeah. uh, boarding school in Dublin. That's what you're going to say about me. I was like, come on. And like that, like he goes into school and everyone is like, oh, that's gay. Yeah. Like, and I think language nowadays is more on the radar. People are more conscious of what they say. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering... Have you any advice for this guy who is worried that if someone calls him like the F word on the field, that he's going to lose the rag and like, you know, yeah, yeah, start yeah. a brawl and get sent off and all? Yeah. Would you have any words of wisdom we you could know pass what? on? You, usually my advice is pointed to the other people and it's about making an environment that's inclusive and um, mm. accepting to the, the gay person. So, you know, there's, I can always talk to the gay person, give the gay person advice, but I think it's up to everyone else to kind of make it a bit more comfortable and nice yeah. for everyone. Language is so important. When I was in school, the word gay was a negative thing. You yeah. got homework, that's gay. Yeah. Your lunch was shite at gay. And, yeah. um, you know, or the teacher got me detention. That's gay. So I associated the word gay with the negative. So why would I want to come out? Yeah. Why would I yeah. want to be a gay person or whatever? So I think it's important for people maybe on his team or whatever to start maybe because it's all well and good for me saying stuff. But that's why I love that thing you did on your podcast. It's, it's good for, you know, straight men to kind of have this conversation amongst themselves and it kind of in whatever way they want. But it's, it's important for other people to make other people feel more comfortable mm. it's kind of like it's kind of like you know being racist or whatever yeah. it's, it's kind of up to white people I think at this stage to kind of call each other out and maybe say here that's not quite sound you know yeah. blah blah yeah. blah so it's it's, um, but it's but, not use that word yeah exactly so um, but what I would say to him is come out it's a real basic thing to say but it's, as soon as I did it I started to live my life and as I said you can't live your best life until you live your true life so I would say to him it gets easier and easier and as I said when that guy who um, said to me are you gay and I said yeah <laughs> there was nothing else you could do then yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. so I would just recommend them to come out and you'll be surprised Is like I'm, I was in school I was the only gay in the village in school at the time but like I, 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 when I left school I've now connected with like, oh, like 10 other gays I was like you were gay <laughs> where are you <laughs> those long lonely nights um, no but um, <laughs> you know you'll be surprised of, of how many people are yeah. kind of mm. unfortunately not living their true life is is coming out as big a deal now as it was say like you know many years ago like i, I like to me now it's like completely normal like you know to, yeah. if, if someone's gay you're not even like oh oh he's gay like you know yeah. i don't think, don't think you have to tell yeah. someone it's like 
okay, grand, yeah, exactly. I don't really mind, like, whatever. Yeah, and, like, it, I think even the marriage referendum, for example, I, I think that meant more than just marriage. That was another, that was Ireland saying, uh, you know, we accept you. Mm. It was another level of acceptance, I think. And, it, it, like, I even noticed visibility rise. Like, when I was walking down the street, there was, like, women holding hands, men holding hands. It was just more, I don't know, it was like another... It was like another door had opened for LGBT people in Ireland. It wasn't just about marriage. So I think it's so different now. It really is. Um, but, it, you know, I feel as a white gay man, I'm a little freer than a, a lot of other people. So I think it's rather than me pulling up the ladder now, it's about thinking of the other people on the LGBT kind of spectrum who need help. Like trans people, for example, they're mm. just innocent people trying to exist. And there's yeah. people out there who try to make their life hell. So it's about me now. I feel free. I genuinely do. I don't feel... I don't. So for homophobia anymore so it's about me now looking back to other people who may need my help so we all have to look out for each other do you ever get any abuse anymore of people not really no like the odd time I'd get the F word thrown at me from like a group of lads or whatever like on the corner or a group of girls I'm not being sexist here you know but it <laughs> really means pricks. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing to me at this stage it's like water off ducks back Water off it, yeah. I can't, I can't believe that still happens. I know, yeah. That's fucking shocking. <laughs> little to be doing. I mean, yeah. it's mad, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. But you mentioned the, the other people in the the rainbow of LGBTQ. Uh, yeah. Um, like, the trans one must be tough for people in school and that. Mm. Yeah. I think of, like, the practicals, like, around, you know, bathrooms. Oh, exactly, yeah. Where I feel, you know maybe trans people are now is where gay people were maybe like 15, 20 years ago. Okay, yeah. Do you know, and it, it differs country to country as well. Some country, like, the, they're disproportionately murdered. Like, yes. you know. Yeah. So, there, you know, th there's that that happens. And then there's, you know, just, there's there's bathroom issues. And then, you know, I, I think as a society, it's we can say, oh, we're not homophobic anymore or whatever. We have to look after the other people on that kind of spectrum too, so. Do you think Ireland has far to go? Um... I think I think in, in different bits and bobs, yeah, but I'm so proud of Ireland. Like, I think we're literally like a beacon of light in this chaos of the world. Do you know, when you look to the clowns to the left of me, jokers to right kind of thing, like yeah. England and America, there's yeah. just so much like chaos going on. But like, we repealed the eighth, we, re you know, had the marriage referendum. It's like, we are showing the world how mm. to be progressive. And I, I adore Ireland. I always like growing up thought I'd be like, I want to, you know, live in Manhattan. Like, yeah. <laughs> Set in the city girls yeah, yeah. You know I want to be You know <laughs> Sipping my I smoke a latte But now I'm like I want to live in a field In Cork <laughs> I adore Ireland So I think Yeah we are, I think we'll never Not have far to go In terms of making sure We're all equal And accepted mm. And blah 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 But we are Shown the world What to do Yeah And uh, But even outside of that You've been quite good At handling online abuse like yeah, yeah. people like tweeting mean stuff at you about you know your fashion or your content or whatever yeah join join the fucking club I know <laughs> yeah but do you know what at the start like at the start of getting a following it was it was weird mm. uh, you know because I, I don't know I always think like if you you know if you're in work or whatever you have a little fight with someone in work and then you go home and you tell your partner about it and then yeah. you kind of can calm down but when you're online or something it's like you're open yeah. to it all the time I often find like I don't really get abuse like d day to day but it's say if I go on the Late Late Show or if I go on a radio yeah. show or something it's like I'm opening up to people who don't know me or whatever yeah. and someone's like get AIDS and die I'm like Jesus cool. yeah literally it's a bit <laughs> fucking strong I it? know <laughs> yeah but then there are always people with blurry pixelated uh the avatars they don't have their yeah. proper picture online they have you know it's it's mickey joe 86 <laughs> 7, 6, 7, whatever they're never like he's not uh, the real mickey joe no, yeah. he's not Fuck mickey joe Art. um so it's you, all, you always have to i even find like people who were like homophobic to me growing up so i made friends with a lot of them afterwards and when I kind of looked at them and like learned about them, they had issues at home. They mm -hmm. were, uh, kind of hated themselves. Yeah. They, uh, you know, I think w if you're a person that's being mean to someone else, you're projecting mm -hmm. like your own insecurities and your own your own um, inner feelings. So I al I always kind of feel sorry for people who are slagging me online or giving me abuse or you know. And I'm not saying cr criticism is different. People can yeah. criticize my yeah. work and what I do, and that's totally fine. But if you're just calling me a and you hope I die like <laughs> your bread like, is shit I'm like are you okay Mickey like do you want to have a chat yeah. like as uh, as prestigious as it is going on the late late the next time we go on I'm going straight I'm quarantining myself from just everything all Twitter. forms of Twitter social media the whole lot like. you are adored though ah 
the people's princes. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland sweethearts. Yeah, you are. Rural Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like that. If you go somewhere, out of the, like it's easy to avoid people if you want. Just yeah. don't follow them. But then if yeah, you go on exactly. TV or that, it's a bit different. Yeah. I want to, I was just talking to my barber this morning and I said you were coming on and he said, you've got to ask him about the hair. Yeah. You you were very open. You shared your story. You got a hair transplant. Hair transplant. Yeah. A uh, year ago. This and coming up. What made you want to get it? And I lose my hair. Um, <laughs> and just asking for a friend to help him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kind of, um, I was, I, I was, uh, my hairline was receding quite dra- like dramatically, which is weird because when I grew up, like if you look at me age 18, 19, I had like Harry Styles mop of hair. Like it was my thing. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. And then when I kind of reached like 25, 26, it started just thinning. It started receding. And I was like, oh Jesus. So I always said like, they're not cheap, but I was like, I, I'd rather get a hair transplant than a car. Maybe yeah. first. <laughs> Do you know, I, I I like my hair transplant, um, but it, it it was the easiest procedure ever. Like I was brought in, and I got it in HRBR in Blackrock. And like, if anyone is thinking about it, go for the consultation yeah. because you know you can go from there and see what you need. Some people only need medication. Some people only need the regain mousse, or some people like me will need the actual procedure. But it's it's way simpler than you think. I was brought in, my head was shaved, and you you sit in a chair and you're given six needles all over the top of your head and it numbs your head Whoa. and then you're watching Netflix yeah. I watched actually I watched Rolled All the Witches and it was like <laughs> remove your vig and I was yeah. like oh my god that's what's happening to me now <laughs> how long did it take? Um, it took eight hours in the chair okay so it's a long procedure and but you that's break, it then. break for lunch. Yeah, that's it. So it, it was, they took a load of hair from the back of my head yeah. and then basically planted it on the front of my head. So it, it's funny, but it's so fascinating how they do it. Like if you take out a hair, you have to put it into the scalp in a direction that's where the other hairs are growing. So it's oh, painstaking. Yeah. That's why it's expensive. Yeah. Um, but that was it then. It was... But that was it. Once, and once I'm done. Eating. Yeah. And and so it, then I had to um, go home and spray my head every 20 minutes with this solution. That was a bit grim. But that was for 20. <laughs> that was for 20. But I was like, William, fetch the spray. <laughs> and like I'm sitting in like Jabba the Hutt while he sprays my head. But then, uh, you know, the hair grows back and it's it's fine. It looks, and I'm it delighted looks great. with it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah. They, you, you go in for like checkups now and again. And like I went for my last, my year one, and they showed me the kind of progress pictures. And it's just amazing. I do have three. YouTube videos if you search James Kavanagh hair transplant and I go through yes. everything so if there's anyone out there who's yeah. listening I do FAQs and stuff at the end so it thoroughly explains the whole process because there is this thing I think about men losing their hair they are I don't know ashamed or don't talk about it or yeah. whatever it's like <laughs> come on like it's grand it happens yeah. to literally a lot of us you're fine though you have Thank a great you. hairline yeah. I'm yeah. fucked yeah. Ah. Yeah. No, it is like, no you're good as well Women, Just a boat. women yeah. are getting all kinds of things yeah. done nowadays. Lips and yeah. eyes and boobs and lads can't get a, a cut of hair. I, no. can, I, can, I can guarantee you if, if, if like my hair's not one of the, the, the small things I have going for me. <laughs> if, if I start losing that, I'm getting that shit done. I know. And you know what? <laughs> when you think of hair transplants, you're like, oh God, I couldn't afford it. But they can cost anywhere from 10 grand to 20 grand. Okay. But a lot of the clinics do um, sort of payment plans. So you okay, can pay yeah. like 100 a month or whatever for X amount, uh, X amount of years. It's like paying off a car. Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you are someone who's con- concerned about it, there's ways. Okay. There's ways to do it. Um, before you go, the, the food is becoming a bigger and bigger part of, yeah, of what life. your work and what, what your life... That on OnlyFans. Yeah. Yes, sorry, yeah. We're we'll, <laughs> we'll, telling you, we, we, we should just set up an OnlyFans. We promise to yes. sign up to subscribe. Uh, where's the future for Curabini? What do you see happening? So we're actually looking at it, we're looking around Cork to move down, but we want to um, set up a kind of, a, a kind of, gorgeous kind of boutique guest house so maybe five or six bedrooms and have a very food focus so people come down for two days and we kind of make gorgeous food for them and maybe do sort of like yoga relaxation weekends we'd love somewhere by the water so we'd love a Kirbini guest house um, and then maybe down the line a Kirbini cafe maybe yeah. in Cork City or somewhere so people are going to come and stay in yeah. James Cavanagh's house experience the James and William way of life it's going to be all your fans paying <laughs> yeah. to, to hang around with you <laughs> can you get class gaff yeah so that's that's the kind of plan okay. that's where we want to go but yeah I want I want, I want kind of I'm kind of sailing towards Curabini kind of being the, the full time thing and uh, yeah I'm very excited about it, where, where it could take us yeah I'd like to even do products and stuff like that like yeah. f- different food products we began by selling food at markets that's our background mm. so um, uh, we you know so we, you we, still you're baking 
Yeah, every week yeah we have a column with the Irish Examiner actually that's out every Saturday it's out today um, but uh, we, we we do food shoots every week for that um, and then we we would do certain things with like we're doing something with uh, Board Bia with White Fish so we're doing like videos and stuff yeah. like that so the online stuff is brilliant and it's a great way to get our, our name out there but we're, we're looking for a solid place now so maybe a little guest house or something okay well you know if something comes up in care we'll give you yes, a shot, you know? yeah. Yeah. we have water here it's, yeah, uh, it's only up the road yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. Okay, <laughs> look. Do. Well, thanks a million for coming in. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, very yeah, rarely I, bro- blow, I rarely, very rarely blow smoke up someone's arse, but like you are a fucking gas man, and <laughs> yeah, it's been you. a pleasure to have you on. I, I'm, I was in a bad mood coming in, and I'm in a, I'm in a great mood now. <laughs> I have to say, so cheer, cheer me up. Maura you. did say to ask you, uh, which one of us is better looking? <laughs> no, she said which which one of us would be most. Would appeal more to the, the gay men of yes. Ireland. The gay men of Ireland. Now, yeah. see, you've both different qualities, I yeah. think. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> let, I, let him down gently. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're definitely more. I would say you're you're a bit more cleaner than me now. I'd be more of a rugged. Like I'm. 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 Do you know boy. what though? Yeah. Have you heard of the, how gays categorize men? No. The different words. A little bit. So I can categorize you yes, maybe because yes. you are both extremely handsome, Thank but you, in different ways. Mm. So I would say you would be categorized as kind of more like a bear or bear, an otter, yeah. and that would Whoa. be kind of someone who kind of has a beard. Tattoos That kind of thing yeah. You'd be more A jock Kind of You know the, Like a I'd say you were a twink When you were younger So it's kind of a handsome Younger looking guy okay. But now you'd be more jock I think it's the The jersey that's I'm wearing a baseball yeah. jersey yeah. yeah So you're more jock You're more bear yeah. So for the gays listening That's how There you we know. go What are the other big uh, categories We should listen out for An otter I an quite like otter, that An <laughs> otter Apparently I'm an otter No apparently I'm a twunk which is horrible. What's a twunk? It's basically, I was a twink when I was younger. I was kind of a little bit pretty, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I, I say that, I was. <laughs> uh, so I was kind of, maybe I was a bit prettier. I wasn't very manly, if you know what I mean. Okay. So a twunk is someone who's a twink who hasn't really turned into anything. <laughs> I'm just kind of clinging on to my like youthful pretty. But we usually say, okay, say Zac Efron was a twink in High School Musical. He's now a daddy. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you seen him? Now he's like buff. Yeah. He's stubble. He's stunning. So he he graduated very well. I'm still clinging on for dear life. I need to get big and buff and then I can be a daddy. Yeah. That's where I'm headed. I need to get to the gym. I want to be a daddy too. <laughs> twink, twunk, daddy, bear, otter. otter. Um, that's, that's the kind of main ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the main ones, I think. Oh, we're going to be so cool. Oh, man. Yeah. I love this one. I love <laughs> this. I swear to God. Okay, that's a wrap. You're a legend. Thanks, Thanks a million. Love this.